And people do not understand the meaning of backbiting because when you say my brother, my sister, do not talk about this person bad because they are not here. They will tell you, but what I am saying is true. That shows the height of ignorance because the messenger, peace be upon him, has explained very clearly that when you are speaking the truth about someone else in their absence, in a way that they would not like it if they were present, that is known as backbiting. Backbiting is to say something about your brother behind his back which would displease him. So one of the companions says, because there's always a cowboy on Facebook, you know, or, or who says, hey, you know what, I'll say to his face, man, I'm not scared. So one of the companions, he says, oh, Prophet of Allah, what if what I'm saying about my brother, it's true? I'm not lying about it. He says, you know, if what you're saying is true, then that's backbiting. And if what you're saying is a lie, it's worse, it's slander. So my brothers and sisters, wallahi, worry about yourself, worry about your own business. We really need to repent and look at the condition of ourselves. We should be loving one another, protecting one another. If, you, you know, if your brother falls, you don't kick him while he's down. You don't sit there and point the finger and laugh. And we're all falling all over ourselves. Now there's a petition to make him What is going on? Wallahi, you know, with all that's happening around the world, we're all concerned about this wedding. What's the big deal? Cut the brother some slack. Let's start showing some love, some respect. Extend your hand out. If you're really concerned, wake up at night, raise your hands and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, it should be noted that backbiting is allowed in certain situations. If the reasons why it's allowed cannot be achieved by any other way. And Imam al nawi rahimahullah, he mentioned this in his famous book, uh, Riyadh al-Salihin. Uh, and in there he mentioned six different uh, reasons for why it is permissible to backbite a person. The first of that is to complain of oppression. So it's permissible for the person who's been oppressed to present his case to the Muslim ruler or the Muslim judge or someone of similar uh, authority. Um, the next uh, reason is when it's allowed to, to backbite is to seek assistance in changing the evil and returning the person who's disobe disobeying Allah to the right path. The next point is uh, to find out about a religious ruling on a matter. Again, this is slightly different. So for example, someone can go to a scholar and say to the scholar, look, uh, what is the ruling on my, uh, let's say, my father who doesn't give me enough money? Or what is the ruling? A wife can go and say, what is the ruling uh, on a husband, on my husband, because he doesn't give me so and so, uh, he doesn't give my rights to me. And so this is permissible by necessity. The next point is to warn against, warn the Muslims uh, from evil and to advise them. Okay, and this can be done in a number of matters. It's not necessarily changing the evil, but this is about warning people from the evil. So, so as to stop other people falling into what someone else is doing or the dangers of something. The fourth example of this, warning Muslims from evil, is that one who has a responsibility does not carry it out. Okay, then it's allowed uh, to backbite him. Now this could be because he's not fit for the job, or maybe he's corrupt, or because he's neglecting his duties, or something similar. It's obligatory to mention this to the one in authority, like the boss, so as to remove him and replace him with one who is more befitting. So he should make him aware of this condition so that he can be dealt with and urge him to improve or be replaced with someone else. Uh, the fifth reason when it's allowed to backbite is if there's someone who openly commits disobedience or innovation. Like openly drinking alcohol, for example, or taking the property of others unlawfully, or taking taxes which are not legislated in Islam, or other such ma matters. The sixth and final reason that Imam al we mentions, he said to describe someone. So if a man is known as the one who has weak eyes, or the lame one, or the deaf one, or the blind one, uh, or the cross-eyed one, and other such similar terms, then it's permissible to describe him only for identification purposes, even if it's using a term that he doesn't like. When you backbite my brothers and sisters, immediately, 
your salah is given away, your zakah is given away, your good deeds given away. You might be the most pious person externally, but because you have harmed someone through backbiting alone or spreading rumor about them or slandering, slandering would mean al-buhtan to create a lie about them. You would have given away your charities. And this is why it's important for us to know that the Almighty has warned us through the lips of the messenger, peace be upon him, regarding every single way that the devil comes to us in order to snatch our deeds away. Do not let your deeds be snatched. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.